What suggestions would you have for advocates and victim service providers trying to provide a more welcoming atmosphere? Be reflective of the population of who they're serving. Accessibility is more than the building, although that's really important. It means having uh, brochures that reflect the people we serve. It means having, if you've got websites, Facebook, social media access, although many older adults don't go online, many do. Being sure that when individuals come into the office that there is the opportunity to meet staff or at least the staff who will be there while they've come in. It means looking at the colors. It means looking at the furniture. Is there furniture with arms? So if somebody has a mobility issue, they can get up comfortably and under their own steam without feeling that they have to rely on somebody else. It does mean looking, if people are going through offices, are the desks far enough apart for wheelchairs? Are they far enough apart for walkers? It means walking through with a critical eye. And that's where I would involve older adults as a resource to come in and say, tell us what we ought to do in the space that may not be as welcoming as what you would like to have seen when you came through the door. Is there anything additional you would add as it relates to having culturally specific services for the diverse populations that we serve? I would strongly encourage working with existing culturally specific services. They are the experts in establishing a partnership and how we, we can be um, learning from them. It's not their job to teach us. It is our job to be as open and accessible and supportive and to find ways that we work together across the board with anybody and everybody. This is about a stronger, healthy, community. And it does mean that some culturally specific programs are paramount and important to survivors. And it's not about rejection of an existing victim services agency. It's absolutely about responding to the needs. What I also would recommend is <clears throat> that thinking of access is really something that all of us need to do, even individual advocates in their advocacy. What is it that I can do so that this person that I'm working with, this victim survivor, that I'm sure that communication is effective, that they're receiving everything that they need, and the bottom line then becomes one of attitude. I can have all the adaptive equipment, I can have a ramp to get in, I can have the wide doorway, I can have materials in all the formats anybody asks for. But if me as the advocate or me as the hotline worker if I have an attitude of you're different and you don't belong here, then all the other stuff doesn't matter. So attitudinal access is also important. And what's useful about having one person or hopefully many that focus on access is that access is not static. What I might need in your agency uh, to avail myself of what you have to offer uh, is going to be different from what you might need. So recognizing that there's nothing static. Everything doesn't remain the same when it comes to access. It's about one person, what they need, and how we make that happen. One of the questions we ask victims that we're working with are, are there any cultural, spiritual, ethnic, sexual preference considerations that we should know about, that you want us to know about, so that we can help make you comfortable? Do you have special dietary needs? Um, are there special times where you pray? And so scheduling meetings or case, case management appointments during that time will be avoided. Um, I, I think it's okay if you're really sincere when you ask, teach me educate me. I don't know. What is it you want me to know about your, your faith, your culture, your ethnicity? I think your environment, uh, providing a welcoming environment would mean the environment had things that look like the individuals we are serving. Um, older individuals um, and asking them what would they need to be comfortable. That's down to chairs, um, plants, 
It could be something as um, basic as a blanket that may seem um, for because someone is cold or um, making sure that the atmosphere is reflective, that it's bright, that it's engaging and that they have a hand in decorating their space. I think we always decorate their space thinking that older victims would like this or they would like that. Asking them and engaging them in that process and providing to your budget question earlier, a budget that is essential to the needs that will make them comfortable. What type of chairs are there? Would they rather have a couch, uh, a recliner? What type of table? Does the group room need a refrigerator? Um, is there a place for them to cook? make meals. What is the atmosphere? Is it engaging that will cause them to feel like this is a place that's safe? And in an emergency shelter system, is this something that is doable right now as far as a home setting? When we think about a welcoming environment, I think that those that are in um, staff positions, we really need to think about having a mix of ages. So if we, are, if we are an advocacy program that serves all ages, we need to make sure that the population of staff reflect the, very, the variety of ages. And then we also really need to recognize some of the physical limitations and physical challenges that an elder person might have. Um, if they're going to be meeting with somebody, we don't wanna send them up the long flight of stairs. Uh, we wanna have um, the space to be more easily accessible that's not going to be phys physically challenging to access, as well as having distractions with other noise and chaos in the environment when we're working with somebody. Anything additional you would say as it relates to culturally relevant services? I think it's important that we, ha we have access to traditional medicines so that as an elder is first sharing that we may be able to offer them some traditional medicines for comfort, or even having some traditional teas to um, just bring in um, a comfortable feeling.